Good morning, everybody. Oh, it's so good to be here this morning. This is Eileen and I own Dean Nicole Designs. And uh, welcome this morning to um, what is going to be a little surprise I've been working on for a little bit. Um, and I am calling it um, Boho um, or Bohemian Farmhouse. So um, I'm gonna let a few people get on for a second um, just to kind of make sure that there's not anything that um, you miss in a second. I know I try to be right at 10 o'clock, so, um, but I just wanna make sure if there's a few more people that wanna hang out with me, um, I will let you guys do that. So um, if you're watching live, there's the little red button that's just right up at the top there that tells you that I'm I'm without any type of editing. It's, it's live, so good morning, Christine. It's so good to see you. Um, and if you're not gonna be watching live, it won't, that little red little live there won't be any um, illuminated. And um, I would love to find out if you're watching live, tell me, um, you know, where you're watching from and how's your weather, I'll tell you mine in just a second. Um, and if you're watching the replay, um, that means that the little red live button isn't there. I would sure love it if you would put hashtag replay and um, still comment. I love to go through and, and ask um, and answer the questions that you guys ask and um, be able just to kind of keep that community going. So welcome and uh, we will just get started in just a second. And um, like I said, what I'm off for today is I think it's not new but it's something new to me but it's just called boho farmhouse and I um, am more of a northwest kind of gal so um, I'm more of like the wood and woodsy kind of thing um, I don't really have I mean, I do have things that are white now and black that are kind of the farmhouse theme but um, switching kind of over from that rustic-y, um, almost like industrial look to um, a little bit of the farmhouse. So I'm gonna be making a few projects today. We're gonna get quite um, messy in paint and we're gonna be using vinyl. Those are the two things that I'm gonna be um, kind of focusing on today and just giving you tips and tricks of how I have used um, vinyl. It is gonna be um, indoor vinyl today. Um, I will show you what the brands and things like that, but I don't know if I would recommend the the kind that I'm using right now um, for like your porch and outside in the rain and and snow and whatnot. So um, we'll be doing that. And then uh, we do we're gonna do some chalk painting today. And um, I am gonna cut a little bit of vinyl. And um, so let's get started. Come along with me. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna be using a ton of paint. So. Um, instead of getting my my shirt all full of paint, I'm gonna just wear um, one of my little aprons here, so we can make sure that we uh, stay a little bit um, clean. We'll see how that goes. Good morning, Joy. It's great to see you. We are we are almost getting ready here. I'm just putting my apron on, and we're gonna do a little bit of painting. Um, the mediums that I chose today, what we're gonna be painting on, I did a little bit ahead of time, and then I um, have some projects that are completely just how I bought them. So um, just for time's sake, just making sure. And I know that there might be one of my things that we're going to be doing. I might have to um, let it dry for a while. And so we'll kind of do a little bit of bouncing back and forth. So I'm one of those where I really like a McDonald's kind of thing where all the paint dries really quick and all that kind of stuff. But um, to be able to be safe to put vinyl on, it really does need to be um, completely dry. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of half, half kind of thing so that we can um, get most of the projects done. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to paint this watering can and the watering can I went, um, let's see, I got this at the Goodwill. Um, it was normally at, at home and that was $24, $24.99. And then I went to the Goodwill and I found it and it is $4 and 49 cents. So $20 savings there. I was super happy. Um, it's been in my garage cause I just, haven't tackled the project yet just to see what I want to do with it. So um, I'm going to, to do that today and we are actually going to paint it white. Um, let me move it around here. This right here, I will turn it to you and 
apologize for it being backwards. Again, it's a crafter's nightmare to flip um, the camera around, but this is Waverly chalk paint and it is just white. And I got this at um, Walmart. And um, I first I usually buy a smaller version of what I'm looking at. Um, and if I really like it, then I go for the big ones. They don't have all um, of the big ones of every color, but quite a few of the colors they do. So um, that's my suggestion to you. If you were thinking about doing a project and you're like, well, I'm not really sure, um, I would definitely do that. This here, um, this size, I actually painted a chair with. So um, it was a, a wooden chair that I just painted the frame and I pretty much used everything up in it and it used, it was one. So it does go quite a, a long way. So um, I'm just gonna use one of my uh, paint can here. It's just a little silver bowl I got from uh, the Goodwill and um, it was like 99 cents. And the cool thing is, is um, I can totally wash it out over and over again. And um, I'm really happy with it. So if you're wondering, hmm, what to do for paint, um, that is a really good way to do um, to do paint. Uh, the brush that I'm going to use, I got this at Walmart, and it is a really fine, really like soft um, brush. The reason why is I want it to go on pretty smooth, and so um, this is the brush that I chose. I chose a big one so that it's going to take less time. But do you see on here the paint is almost like a gel? And so it's going to go on really, really smooth. So I'm going to just go for it. And we're going to see. Um, I did not um, sand this one. You can. I've seen people do that. Um, I did wash it off with uh, baby wipes just to make sure because it was, it was in my garage. So I just wanted to make sure that... Um, I didn't have any any dirt on it from from uh, where it was out in the garage so I'm just gonna start going around and I am gonna go back and forth I'm not gonna go up and down I want the paint um, to go because you will be able to see some of the, the lines in there for right now I just want it to go back and forth so I was telling you about weather we finally Finally, good morning, Jeff. Good to see ya. We finally hit 40, or at least 35 to 40 at our house um, in the last week here. Finally, um, able to have some of our snow melt off and be able to uh, move around a little bit better. I am. I have no. Um, I have no problem sitting in my house, but. Wow, it's been a long time. <laughs> and I'm not a big driver in it, as I told you before. And so my husband, Jeffrey, he takes me around as, as much as I need to. So that's super nice. But I am kind of getting antsy. It has been a while since I've driven. <laughs> so I think probably I should go and do the adventure. But I think I might do this that this afternoon. We'll see. But... It's definitely um, a change in the weather and I'm very happy. Um, we've heard about it before. Last winter wasn't that great of a, a snowfall and people were like, oh, we just wait until you get stuck in your house. And um, I was like, well, okay. And now I definitely know exactly what they're, they're uh, referring to of just wishing that the snow would go off the road. And now it has, it's all, it's all ready to, just it's just piled up on our our lawn which is which is okay all right so I'm just gonna keep going and while you're hopping on let me know where you're you're watching from and tell me what your weather's like are you ending up in the um, unfortunate uh, cold snap or um, I've even heard tornadoes and all sorts of stuff going around on in the in the countryside there it's definitely, um, there we go. It's definitely a different winter than I thought it would be. Okay, so I am going to make sure that each of these little spots here, we're gonna turn this all, all wonky and back and forth because I wanna make sure that um, with the boho theme, um, it is basically farmhouse white 
and um, whatnot, but it does have a texture to it like um, wood textures and fibers um, like macrame. And um, so I wanna make sure that this ends up staying white. We don't wanna have any of the, the dark, um, some of my other projects I've said before where uh, it's okay that it pops through and um, that little rustic-y. Uh, but for right now, I would like it to be completely, completely white. So um, let's just make sure that the first coat is able to, I, I don't want to do it too thick because I want it to be able to dry in between. And this chalk paint is super forgiving. Um, you can touch it up, you can wipe it off. Um, well, it's a little bit tacky to be able to, um, you know, if you get on a spot that you don't want to, it's very easy to be able to work with. I'm very happy with this brand. The, the Waverly is really nice. Okay. All right, let's see here. We're gonna move things around. And let me know if you have, um, if you've done this style, where if you've done farmhouse, um, or if you have done the, the boho, um, there's so many ways that you can um, kind of elaborate on the style. Um, I was just helping a friend, she um, is being a, a, helping out with a baby shower and it's boho. And um, they were talking about, um, you know, just the style and things like that. And they're going for the boho feathers. And um, I thought it was gonna be more of like boho flowers and things like that. So um, let me know if you are, uh, are familiar with, with what that is. I'd love to kind of get some clarity. I wasn't really sure. Um, and that's kind of me. I just kind of, if I'm not really sure, I'll ask and um, make sure. And um, if it's a style that I'm not familiar with, I'll just go for it. We'll see how it goes. But I think um, that this is going to be a really fun kind of just a, a planter, I think I'll put in it. Um, there's also, you know, you can do a lot of things with this. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna to put flowers in it. I've also thought of putting succulents in the um, in the top, just putting a little, um, oh, there we go. Just putting like a little pot in the top. Um, what are your ideas? Do you, should I do the feathery boho thing? There we go. But like I said, this is one of those projects where it's gonna take two coats. I'm gonna do the top here, and then we are just gonna set it off to the side. Um, I am not going to uh, do the inside right now because I think I like the idea of looking down into that dark. It might give it a little bit more um, definition to keep that, to keep it um, dark. So. We'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to show you how quick and easy this paint is. And there's already parts here that's already started to dry. So I'm super excited about that. I don't have to wait too much. But um, like I said, it's, it's Waverly is a really nice paint. And this one's just white, I believe. Yep, it's just plain old white. There we go get each side and um, tell me also what is your favorite way to clean up this this kind of a project do you have I use baby wipes all the time um, because my fingers always get full of, of stuff I don't want it to and I think that's probably the, what I'm gonna do to be able to clean this up but let's go around and I'm gonna make sure that my top area here because if you're gonna be looking at it, you don't want any of the dark stuff showing. And like I said, I think I'm pretty happy with this brush. It's done a really good job. So if you can find this at Walmart, I would recommend this one. Okay. All right, so that is gonna be my first coat. And I know it's not 
completely beautiful and wonderfully artistic but it will definitely do its job for the first coat so we are going to set that off to the side and i'm hoping i'm hoping that um, by the time we are done um, with the couple of the other projects that we're going to be doing that that'll be ready to be able at least to put a second coat on so um, it recommends usually about an hour in between and like i said i could um, shoot it with my hair dryer and things like that that will speed up the process but um, I think for right now I will try my hardest to be um, to be patient and let it dry so okay so I gave um, that the first coat and this right here this is a just I think it was um, beans I think it was just a can that that had soup in it I think it was and um, I just did that same process here. I didn't um, sand it or do anything different. I just put the, the chalk paint on it, uh, let it dry. This is one coat, which I am happy with. Um, I do want this one to look a little bit um, weathered. This, I'll show you what the can looks like beforehand. This is one of them. And like I said, I just threw some paint on it, um, washed it out obviously, and then um, we are ready to go for this. So. Um, I have uh, lots of um, opportunities for this uh, this winter to, to entertain. And so um, I have um, a bunch of silverware that I love to use, but when I use those little um, mason jars and things like that, uh, when I'm when I'm entertaining, the, my forks and things like that are super heavy. So um, every time I try it, and it, it, it's one of those, I don't know, you let me know if you have a better idea, but. It's an epic fail because I have these little um, beautiful little uh, um, glass little jars and I put this the silverware in it and I put it up there and then people start going and it always falls over so I need something that is tall enough and I want to be able to have either one for forks one for knives and things like that and so this is my solution and we'll see how it goes but um, like I said I just took the chalk paint and then I just put one coat on it. I did hit it with my um, hair dryer just to make sure that it, it um, dried completely. And then I let it sit overnight. And I think that's probably the best for um, when you're gonna be doing any type of vinyl. So let me show you what I did with my vinyl. I have, um, I have a few uh, different types of vinyl that I used um, for our projects today. And this one here, it's this one is a Scotch brand. And I went, and if you have them around your house um, or your area, go and use them. I went to a sign company and I said, hey, I'm a local crafter and I wanted to find out if I could use or have or buy any of your unused vinyl something that um, if they were to make a big sign and they had extra vinyl it's usually sitting off to the side in some kind of dusty place that they kind of keep it hoping thinking sometimes they'll use it um, but i said are you willing to part with it and um the company that i went to a couple times um i brought um uh, money and said hey i would love to, to purchase any of your extra unused vinyl and they were like no it's totally fine um you know you're welcome just to take what um, we have on stock so um i actually brought them donuts afterwards um after i was playing with the other stuff i was so appreciative they bought me a, you know brought me a big box of it and i had miscellaneous um really fun stuff so my um, suggestion to you, this is um, outdoor vinyl that you can use. It's just like when you go to a store and their big vinyl um, uh, sign is right out in front. This is that kind of vinyl. And so um, I have quite a bit of it that I got. Um, and so I've been using it up for the last couple, I would say couple of years. But um, anyway, that is one good way to be able to get vinyl at a either cheaper price or, you know, something that, you know, it's, you're not going to get exactly what you want because it's, you know, leftover, but it's really fun to be able to practice with if you um, are having a project that you are making sure that you want to have, you know, cut it a few times beforehand. Um, this is a really good way to go. So um, basically what I did is I just I cut it out on my Cricut and um, how, how I usually do this, I have 
two different tools that are like my saving grace. This is the spatula that's um, Cricut, and then this is like just a little pick. And I always, when I start, I just peel it the corner off, and then I roll it back as um, slow as I can. And if I end up having any type of ripping and tearing, I will fix um, that at the end as far as um, pieces that are stuck in between the letters and stuff like that. But I try and do the outside first. And when you look at it, you can see that there's a little piece here from the S and all the middles are there. So um, that's what I do first. I make sure that the, the major part goes off first. And then, um, then I'm gonna take the inside and just go ahead and because this is sticky already, I just set it off to the side and I roll it so that if I have um, extra, then I will just put it right on top of each other. What you don't wanna do is um, just, you, there, you need to have a system of where you're go putting the pieces that you take off because every once in a while, you may get one of those rogue pieces of vinyl and um, unfortunately, if it ends up, you know, it's better if it's outdoor vinyl, but if you're doing um, like t-shirts and things like that, and you have a small piece that ends up on your design, it is really hard to get off. So that is my recommendation. Sometimes I even take um, a roll of, of tape and put it on there and so it sticks to the tape and then I just throw a piece of tape away. I think that's um, a good idea just to make sure that you don't have those little mishaps. So, like I said, this is outdoor vinyl, so um, I could actually wash this if I wanted to. Um, not in the dishwasher. Um, I wouldn't recommend that unless you have like on a cup or something like that. But um, I would take a damp washcloth or a baby wipe and wipe this down. Okay, so there is my image. And I actually, for time's sake, I went and um, put my... my um, so there's a couple different ways that you can do this. To transfer your image from your piece of vinyl um, paper to your project, you can either um, use transfer tape, which, um, let me show you it. This is one of my big ones here. This is actually more of a stickier, and it's um, quite a bit more um, firm. And this one here is if I'm going to be using um, it on flat surfaces or if I'm going to use um, you know indoor vinyl that I want to make sure that once I put it down it stays there um, this one here I want to use this is just um, you know when you go to your kitchen and you line your cabinets with it this is I think it's yeah it's the duck brand I think I got this at um, big lots I think for like four or five dollars something like that so um, what I did is I, I have, I switch back and forth between the both of them. If I want my image not to move and I want it to be just to go down and that's it, um, I use the one that's a little bit more um, structured. This one here is if I want to be able to move it like um, on a round surface. Um, I did for Christmas, I did, um, uh, what do you call it, um, little ornaments and I had to move things around because um, the ornament was round. So I use this because it is a little bit more pliable. You can be able to move your image a little bit better. So those are my two that I recommend. Um, I got this on, I believe I got this online, um, Amazon or something like that. And I think it's called transfer um, paper. I think that's what they, they used on the, the caption. So um, what we're gonna do is, this is, this is my um, image that I'm gonna put on here. And I want to make sure, so all I did is took that, that piece of paper um, that your image is on, and then I put the clear over the top, and then I just cut around it so that it is, it's, it's ready to go for me. And so my um, suggestion to you, I'm going to move this. I want it to be on a surface that, um, because it is round, I want to be able to make sure that when I put it down, I can move it back and forth and um, that it'll be able to, um, here, let me roll it up better. Um, it'll, it'll be able just to sit on my counter better. So what I usually do is I take and roll one side and then roll the other, which gives it a little bit of an indent. And that's where I set most of my projects, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. 
Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to, uh, one thing I forgot to get. This is my handy dandy scraper and I use this for vinyl on cars and um, stickers and whatnot. And so I recommend if you don't have one of these, the Cricut has a little scraper thing like that. These are really nice to use. Okay. So here we go, the magic moment. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna flip it upside down so I can see it, otherwise we might have, it might be crooked. So I'm just gonna go for it. All right, so this one here, we're just gonna take it off. And like I said, it is exactly, there we go, there's a piece that went all the way through. There we go. So this is exactly what I, unfortunately somebody's trying to call me and I'm like, oops, I forgot to do the do not disturb. Um, but anyway, our image is just like this. And so I want to make sure that when I put it down, usually it's one and done um, for outside vinyl. You want to make sure that when you put your image down, it's going to be there to stay. And so I do the U shape and then I just roll down to the side and then press it down. So. We want to make sure that everything stays and the other reason why i use this um, transfer tape it is not as sticky so i don't want my um, my paint to come off and because of all these different grooves and things like that we just want to make sure that um, where we put this is where it's going to stay so i'm just going to press it down with my fingers i know that on here it's going to have little bumps and i'm okay with that that's just kind of going to be the, the farmhouse look. It's not perfect in, in any shape or form, but I think that it's going to be super fun when somebody walks up to here and there's forks in it. And <laughs> I love the saying. How about you guys? I think the saying is really funny. Okay, so once I get that down, make sure that everything that I can see is already on there. If I needed to and there's a flat surface, go ahead and use your scraper. And then what I'm gonna do is turn it off to the side there and I'm gonna pull back at a 45 degree angle and to make sure that it stays on, I'm just gonna pull back lightly, get it started. There we go. And do you see how it just pulls back? And each time here, I'm just pressing down the image to make sure that it stays on, on the um, can. So that when I, um, I'm going to actually seal this because um, I want to make sure that this stays on my can forever. And if I want to, like I said, if I want to... Um, wipe it off with a, a baby wipe or a washcloth or even just rinse it really quick under water that it's going to stay. There we go. And see how this is super pliable? That's what I like about using this counter, counter tape. So if you wanted to, you actually could keep this and reuse it. Um, every once in a while I have a little, um, little box over here that I put all my, um, reusable uh, pieces of, of transfer tape in there and so that I can use um, it multiple times. Okay, and this um, vinyl here is glossy, so I kind of do like it. I think it looks a little bit more almost like you spray painted the image on the, the can. So there we go. Look at how easy that is. I love it. And just a little tip, um, if you do not have a Cricut, and you um, are not able to um, cut your own images in vinyl, um, there's one thing that I love about um, being able to, if you don't have things, um, find a resolution for that because um, not everybody can go and buy a Cricut machine, but if you go on Etsy, um, people will actually cut them for you at a fraction of, um, you know, a few dollars where that would be totally fine to be able to do that um, for a project like this. And a lot of times people just, you know, they'll, you'll be able to pick your color 
and um, image and whatnot. And I think that is um, a good alternative if um, some, sometimes they're like, oh, I'm not that crafty or, oh, I don't have a Cricut machine. Um, you know what? Etsy does a really good job of, of being able to, um, to accommodate for that. And if you're watching and you really want this image in, in the vinyl, let me know because, um, I sure can help you out. Okay. So there we go. That's ready. I'm going to seal that. And how I'm going to seal it is... This is polymer. It is a, um, it's from Win, Win, Min Wax. There we go. And um, it is just a um, protective finish. And I use this if I'm going to be um, doing wood or um, if I'm going to do metal. And there's, there's really no um, super great, you know, technique that I can tell you other than um, just go ahead and go for it. It's um, opaque, so it's gonna come out a little, starting on um, the image, it's gonna be a little bit filmy, but um, after it is done, it will dry clear. And see how that easy that is? I, it's, I was like, man, I think this is almost too easy. But I'm gonna make sure that I get it over all of the image so that it seals it in and on the, the can. So if I wanted to, I could, um, I'm not gonna go around the whole thing today just for time's sake, but um, I just like to go right where the image is. There we go. And there is a little bit of bubbly and that bubbly um, little bubbles, they will pop and smooth out There we go. So there you go. Isn't that awesome? So for a um, can of beans, a little piece of, um, I think this is about six by eight um, or seven uh, piece of vinyl and some chalk paint, I'm going to be able to um, make sure that when my guests come and they take a fork, they will be able to um, do it without having it fall over anymore. So I'm super excited about that. So we are gonna let that dry, I'll set it right off to the side here. So that's part of um, the, the vinyl process. So, so when I do metal, I make sure that um, it is, uh, you know, the paint is super dry so that it doesn't pull up the vinyl in the transfer, we'll pull the paint up. Um, so the next one I'm gonna show you, this is how I do uh, wood. And um, today, for time's sake, uh, this I got these. There's three of them here. I got them at, um, I think I got it at um, Goodwill. They were in a pack, pack of three. And um, I was like, ooh, let's see. What am I going to be able to do for that? So what I did is, um, for time's sake, I just took the same uh, white Waverly paint and I painted two coats um, on it and I did not um, sand it. I didn't do anything other than I put a little bit of, of um, tape here because I didn't want the chimney to get um, white paint on it and I just painted the front of it. This here is kind of the boho style of farmhouse where you show natural and you show painted surfaces together. So there's a little bit of the rustic -y wood um, but the white house, you know, the farmhouse bright white is um is i guess what is is the cool new thing um so what i do for this is i make sure that that um you know when i when i do that i just leave a little bit of it on the edge there and um this right here is my sanding block this is a 3m block and i believe it's like a hundred no two two hundred um grit but you're welcome to use any um any sandpaper grit you want and all I do is is I just go ahead and I'm just gonna distress the corners and make sure that um, it looks a little bit more rusticy. if you wanted to you could actually take um, and do some rub and buff and um, distress black around the corners but see how I'm just taking off a little bit just so that it doesn't look super you know pristine that, um, sometimes it's hard just to get those lines straight. And then I'm just going to go over this top lightly because that is going to help my vinyl stick to it. So 
So I'm going to do that to each of these. It's so good to see everybody hanging out with me. Thank you so much for being a part of my crafting journey. I love trying to figure out new things. Um, it is a challenge and it is a blessing in disguise. I love it. It's what makes me very um, motivated to hang out and be online with everybody. And um, I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Um, my favorite thing is to have people just text me and say, hey, this is what I did this week. And um, go ahead and put it in the comments there. Um, also, I have a, um, uh, it's called Jane Nicole Designs VIPs, where I ask questions and um, different things. Um, I do um, like my Christmas tour of my house is up there. Um, and there's certain things I like to share with people who, um, you know, just want that extra little bit of um, personal uh, relationship. And so, I just wanted to um, say, hey, you know what, if you're up for that and you want to um, join the community of us um, redesigners and um, be able to do that with us, you're sure welcome to. So, okay. I just want to make sure that there's enough that it looks like I'm purposely uh, sanding here. And like I said, I just want to make sure that uh, my vinyl today is going to stick, so I'm going to rough it up so that each of my um, images has something to stick to. Just make sure I kind of do a little bit of extra sanding in the spots where I know I'm going to put my vin vinyl. Okay, and then this is a, the microfiber cloth that I used for the can, and this actually um, takes the, the sawdust and stuff off really well. So um, if you have an old microfiber, I think my husband used this when we um, we detailed cars and stuff like that. So thanks, honey. Okay, so we're gonna put this off to the side. Let me clean up my thing here. Okay, so here's our three pieces that we're gonna be using today. And I have already um, put three pieces of vinyl I cut with my Cricut and um, I just thought, you know what, let's just kind of do a little bit of the, the farmhouse theme. We'll see how it goes. And um, I'm going to do this, um, this vinyl here, the transfer, because I want to do this one because I want it to be a little bit more structured when I put these on the board. So let's make sure that I have enough I just want it to cover I just want it to cover the image and the image um, the vinyl that I'm using today and sorry that it's backwards but you can um, you'll be able to look at this uh, Michaels has this vinyl this is a indoor um, adhesive kind of it's uh, for walls scrapbooks cards invitations and craft um, projects. And you can see there it's $7.99 and that's a really good price for um, some vinyl. And it is um, two sheets and they're 12 by 36 inches. So it's actually quite a bit of vinyl to use that. Um, sometimes it's on sale and um, so I like to get that brand. So I wanna make sure that you you know what, um, what type of vinyl I'm using. So the first one we used outside vinyl. Um, this project we're using inside vinyl. And um, this one here, like I said, it's a little bit more structured. The outside side vinyl um, is a little bit more pliable. It's, it's movable. And that's why I used it on the can so that um, it could go in between, excuse me, the, the grooves and whatnot. Let's get our little, there we go. Sometimes this likes to really cling to, there it goes. So there we go. And what I like about this is this has the little grates on it. I don't know if you can see if the grid is on there. And um, it's nice to be able to use that when you're trying to line up different um, projects. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down, make sure that it adheres right down to your transfer. And then I'm gonna use it on this one here. So move this out to the side. Let's see if I can do this backwards. Okay, 
So we're going to push down and make sure that it sticks to the transfer sheet. We'll do that, get it started. Let's make sure. It looks like the cow's leg wants to stick onto the paper. So there we go. And depending on how intricate your design is, um, this one is not that intricate, so thank goodness. But um, this is how it turns out. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up. Make sure, I'm gonna make sure that you can see it. Let me know if you can't. I'm gonna put this down, make sure that his, the chicken is straight. And this vinyl is nice. It is a little bit more forgiving on um, the sticking. You can actually pick it up a little bit. So I love that. All right, that's where I want it. I wanna make sure that the chicken's up in the top. Make sure that it, it sticks down as well as we can make it. And then pull off at a 45. There we go. Isn't that super cool? I'm super excited. So how many of you have an idea of what you'd like to do with vinyl? Give me a, a shout out in the comments of what would be, um, what do you think your next project will be? And if you have any questions about um, how to do this process, please um, feel free to message me. Um, I know YouTube has some really fun stuff, but um, like I said, you're welcome to, to ask any questions that you have. There we go. All right, and so this one here, we're gonna put right in the middle. I'll give it a little bit of a, down at the bottom. Yep, it's pretty good eyeballing, I think. Some of that stuff, if it gets so um, straight and whatnot, it, it's almost hard to hard to look at it. There we go. So there we go. There's the barn. Let's take this off. We're ready to. And I can see these. These are going to be so cute. I have a little um, a little shelf in my kitchen area that I'm decorating and whatnot for each of the seasons. And um, I think that's a really, uh, this is gonna be super fun. I'll have to um, put a picture of it when I'm finished um, up on the feed so that you, you can see um, what it looks like. So this is the third time I'm using this transfer and um, like the transfer um, sheet and it does really well. I think this is, um, like I said, if you're gonna be using um, it multiple times, um, it does a really good job. So let's see how this one, this is a little bit more intricate in its detail. So I got to start that. And I pull back from top to bottom just to make sure that it comes off without too much grief here. There we go. Okay, so there's our piece that we throw away. And then we are gonna put our sign on. So I'm gonna flip this over since it's it's a word that I need to make sure it's gonna be straight. There we go. And you can decide where you wanna put it on this. These are these are really nice. I, I wish I could find a little bit more. So if you know where these little houses are, um, like I said, I got them at the Goodwill. So I don't know if you can buy them in the store. So um, put a link up there if you see um, where you can get these. Awesome. Okay, put that one off to the side. So there we go. Here is our three. So now I wanna make sure that from start to finish, so you know what to do with these. This is the same process that I would do um, with all of my signs that I make and and um, and uh, sell. So 
Um, I like to make sure that um, when you get one of my projects that it stays together, that it weathers the storms and um, you're able to use it for years and years to come. So every time that I make something, I make sure that um, it is going to, to last the test of time. So we're gonna go ahead and take our, um, our clear and we're gonna put it right over the top. This here, I don't put a huge, you know, thick um, coat because sometimes if it's too thick, it starts to bubble on top of the vinyl. And I don't want it to do that. I just want it to look like it is just lightly covered. So if you can see that, I know it's kind of hard, but um, that is how I make sure that um, it's not too wet and bubbles the vinyl. And I want to make sure that I seal the paint and the vinyl together. Um, I've also heard you can use Maj Paj, but um, this here is specifically with um, wood in mind. So I make sure that, that I do that. There we go. And like I said, you this is going to be a really fun project because you could actually add, after I um, let this dry, you could add any type of holiday to this and use these all year round. I know it's kind of hard when you get up. I was putting away all my Christmas stuff and I ended up having a few extra totes because um, where I volunteer at, um, I volunteer at a thrift store. Um, we were we were getting a bunch of stuff. And so um, I was like, oh, I need to bring that home. And my husband was like, hey, why don't you get a bunch of garland and things like that? And so I ended up, I'm like, whoo, I ended up with, I think, three extra totes of Christmas stuff this year. So um, to be able to take that um, piece or, or things like that and be able to use them throughout the year would probably be a little more beneficial for me. Um, I don't have a ton of storage yet, um, but um, like I said, it, it's something that I think this would be really fun to have up all around all year long. So, okay, so now what I'm gonna do, this is, this is we're going coming in the home stretch and um, I just wanted to show you, because I've already painted that and, and we put the vinyl on and whatnot, I just wanted to give you a little heads up of this is how the process works. You kind of saw how it went together pretty quick, but this is the beginning. This is the starting of um, any of my signs like this. So I make sure that when um, I have it, it doesn't matter as far as um, uh, sizing wise, I do a lot of um, extra pieces. My husband does a bunch of DIY stuff. Um, this particular piece, I actually got a gal was selling a bunch of wood on um, uh, marketplace. And so I went to her house and I was like, hey, you know, I gave her, I think it was like 20 bucks and I had got this big box of a bunch of uh, wood pieces and, and things like that. So um, check around. There's lots of different places where you can find, um, you know, scraps and things like that. Um, but like I said, this is, this was from one of the things I was like, wow, I'll be able to use and make a bunch of signs. So, um, I wanted to show you what I do first. And this is one of those, I make sure that when I'm starting a project that it is free of any type of lint. And, um, that's the best thing to do when you have, um, this is, I believe it's pine. And it does have, um, there is gonna be a little bit of moisture in it. So um, I did make sure that when I'm doing a project like that, that I account for if it's a drier wood or if it's something that, you know, you know that, that there's gonna be something that bubbles up from it. Um, you may wanna seal it in ahead of time. But this one for this project, I wanted to make sure that, that some of that, if it, if it comes out as imperfections, that it's gonna be part of my project. So. Um, what I did is I just took, this is one of those brushes um, that is a little bit more coarse and I want that to be a little um, more um, prevalent in my project. I want um, lines and things like that. I don't want it to be flat and completely perfect. So um, what I do, this is, um, i show you what, I believe this is celery. Yep, it is. So this is Waverly and it is called celery. And um, I've used this actually quite a lot. But 
Um, I just wanted to show you, I'm going to just go rogue a little bit and I'm going to pour it on because I'm going to start from one side to the other and I'm going to start at each of the corners and then I'm going to work my way in. And the reason for that is I want my corners to be um, full of, of paint, but I don't want it to run over the side. So see how I did that? I just want it to go right on the edge. Um, with the boho theme, I want to see a lot of that um, natural wood hanging out. If I were to do a complete farmhouse I would paint the whole thing even the sides um, to be able to do more of the the farmhouse clean theme but um, for this I just want to make sure that I get um, the top surface and so like I said I, I want to keep the the sides because I want that wood to come through and that element um, of natural um, kind of almost like, um, well, Bohemian is more of like, uh, I would say, um, tropical, breezy, to be able to um, let that natural part of, of the wood show through. And I like that. In my house, I have a lot of exposed, um, we're changing over the, the um, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, um, stuff that's all... Uh, stained and things like that, um, I wanted to make sure that I had um, a little bit more of the natural wood coming through. So we've changed out a lot of our, um, uh, in the kitchen area, we've changed out a lot of that uh, painted and um, stained stuff to just actual natural wood. So it has been really a fun, fun transformation. Okay, so that is one coat. And that is how I start off. And um, I actually, um, I'm going to hit it with the, the um, hair dryer. And that's kind of, I'm just going to show you a little, I'll see if it happens. Some, sometimes um, some of the bubbles come up through and um, it makes for little like domes and things like that, which um, when you start um, sanding, it makes it really pretty. So let me show you. at it there's gonna be a little bit of bubbling right here and you can just tap it and they they're like little bubbles that pop up and down and that is one of those that gives it I'm gonna show you one that is already dry it gives it a little bit of a, a bumpy texture and uh, when you move this off to the side when you start sanding and this is what I'm gonna do this is I do two coats and then I go for it I just start to sand I'm going to show you that it starts to it starts to take those little bumps and things like that and it starts to pull away from the wood and that's where I get some really nice um, distressing. So I'm going to do the same that I did with these. I'm going to actually move these so I don't get green, green um, dust all of them because they're still drying. And if you want to, you can wear something so you don't have to sniff all the paint. Fluffy, but I'm, I'm good for the day. This um, cloth does pick up quite a bit of that. Let's move that off to the side. 
which is fine, I need it. <laughs> I definitely need the, the uh, arm workout. Okay, so I'm gonna tap this off. Excuse the noise there. And then I'm gonna take this and put it off to the side. And I'm going to shoot it with some hair dryer, get that stuff off. The okay, so now I am ready. This is um, ready to put my vinyl on. There we go. So we're almost kind of right in the spot where we did with the, the houses. But um, I wanted to show you this right here. So this is... This is our saying, and I gotta read it to you because it's hilarious. Um, I, you know, I live in Idaho and um, I grew up on a 10 acre farm. So a farmhouse to me is, you know, jeans, t-shirt, um, you know, playing with the, the goats and the horses and, or the horse and the cows and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, growing up we moved, um, I moved and I don't live on a farm, but that farm is still in me and um, I still wanna be able to, to be a part of that, but um, you know, like I said, I, don't, I live in a development. There's, you know, there we're on quarter acre spots, but um, I still have that that ten acre farm in me. So um, this saying it says a farmhouse ish, the look and feel of a classic vintage farmhouse minus the actual farm. And so this is my house. This is me. I still love to be able to. Um, be a part of that farm but like I said I live in I do live in the county but um or no is it I think it is the city limits so yeah anyway long story short this is my wishing that I could be um back on the farm but um I will have to settle for that which I'm totally okay with um I really enjoy where we're living at um we have wonderful neighbors and um when the snow happened, um, they all came out and um, we have snow blowers and things like that because uh, it piles up here pretty quick. And um, everybody was out there. We were drinking coffee. We always get up, my husband and I drink coffee in the morning and kind of start our day together. And um, sure enough, the snow blowers started to, you know, turn on and I'm like, honey, stop drinking coffee. Um, the guys are out there. You better go out or they're going to go and, and be able to, to uh, they're going to do our driveway and we won't be able to help out. So, um, the community is definitely, um, the good old, uh, I would say the, the good old, um, kind of leave it to beaver kind of, um, community, which we are super, super excited to be a part of. So, okay. I just cut this out this morning with, um, the Cricut and it's the same vinyl, um, the, the vinyl that I showed you from, um, Michael's. And um, I went ahead and I just picked out the, um, the big part of it. And then now I'm going back and just picking apart the um, inside of the letters just to make sure that um, you kind of see the whole process of how this works. Um, if you are not a person that likes to do this, picking apart and weeding, um, like I said, Etsy is a great place. Or if you would like this um, vinyl piece, let me know and I can... I can um, see about getting you one of these, but um, sometimes people don't like to pick out all the vinyl and I understand that, but for me, it is super enjoyable. I love it. It's, I could, not that I could do it all day long, but it, it, it's okay for me to, to be able to do that. So, all right, this is about a 10 inch piece and it's about seven inches tall. So I'm gonna just cut a big, big piece of the transfer. And then we'll make sure, yep, it is big enough and it'll go over the whole thing. I want to make sure that I can pick this off, okay? 
That is one thing. If you've got a better idea, I'd love to hear it. Because it kind of gets stuck once in a while. This one is one of those pieces where I'm going to keep the backing because I will use this one again. So I'm going to put that off to the side where I make sure that I can reuse it. And when I put this down, I want to make sure that it touches every piece of vinyl that I would like to put on my sign. Okay, perfect. There we go. And this is a little bit different vinyl, so I want to make sure that each of these pieces comes up. Let's flip it the other way. different ways that you can do this and I just like to pull it back and find out what's stuck and what's not and like I said make sure that those little pieces of vinyl that you picked out that it's off your project so you don't end up having anything stick to your project that you don't want to have happen there okay and I do have a little piece of the paper stuck there it goes go. Also, it does um, have to do a lot with how um, deep you've cut your um, your piece of, of um, vinyl too. And it looks like this one cut a little bit deeper so that the, um, the piece of, of, of um, vinyl paper is sticking to the back, which it's okay. I can... It may take me a few seconds more, but I still can work at it here. There we go. And that's one thing when um, you're using vinyl. Vinyl is, not that it's not forgiving, but it has its own attitude. So I make sure that when I'm doing vinyl that I take my time and that um, you don't wanna rush doing vinyl because a lot of times it's one and done, that's it. It's kind of hard to, um, when you end up having a piece that doesn't stick right, it's hard to put it back on there. So, there we go. Let's put that down. Halfway done. And it looks like one is sticking there. There we go. All right, let me move that one back. There we go. It had a mind of its own, but now it's tame. I'm gonna go back over this way. The little letters are, I would say, probably the one that you just kind of have to make sure that when you when you cut the depth. Um, that it's not too deep and that um, it comes off. There we go. But if I didn't show you the whole process um, and you started doing this process and it, the same thing happened to you, you'd be like, wait a minute, what's going on? And I just want it to be um, completely real and make sure that, that if there's anything I can help and give you a tip or a trick, that's how we're going to do it together. All right. There we go. I say, if you're joining me, let me know where you're from. I love to find out where where my people are watching from. Um, and let me know what you're up to. What What's your project? Or um, what would you like to try? Is there something that you've seen, like, like me just running across this boho thing? Um, it's new to me. Um, if it's not 
to you. Um, let me know how long this has been around and about. I've seen the, the boho and I've seen the farmhouse, but to be honest, I have not seen boho farmhouse together. So maybe it's a, a 2022 thing. I have no idea, but there we go. Okay, it looks like I have one of the pieces here. It has a little bit of the transfer on the back of it. So I want to make sure that that comes off before I put my image down. There's one. And then here's another one. There we go. So these are just little pieces that, that they just wanted to stay around. And I want to make sure that when um, I put my image down, that all the pieces are off. There we go. Okay, so I look and make sure that there's no backing from the others. There we go. Okay, we are ready. I promise, this is it. Okay, this is gonna be our front, front and center. There we go. Should I? I think I will put it right in the middle. I want the farmhouse to be right in the center. There we go. Okay. All right, and then take your scraper. Make sure that that goes down. And it's okay to rub with your finger. I think that helps with the little grooves because it is wood and it has it's not a flat, flat surface. Okay, and then we're just gonna be pulling back. Super easy, how easy is that? I love it. Okay, and I'm gonna save this for later. Put that off to the side. Okay, and this one here, I'm gonna do something different. Um, so just to show you some different mediums that we can do to seal this, this is um, wax and it is from Waverly. It goes along with the chalk paint and this is going to seal in, I haven't even used it yet, this is a new one. Um, this is going to seal in the, the wax. Oops, no, this is white, I want clear, sorry about that. Wrong one. I don't want to put white over it because it's black letter. I want the clear. There it is. That's what it looks like. Okay, and so how I use this is I'm going to take a little piece here. And this is the microfiber towel. I'm just going to take a little piece in it, dab it. And then I'm just going to go. This is a wax that that you do need to re-apply um, if you are gonna put this outside. Um, but it seals in the paint to the, the wood. And the outdoor vinyl is doing its thing. It's just gonna stay there. But what I like about it is it doesn't give you, um, it's a little bit of a mat, but it just protects protects the wood because I don't want to um, discolor it by sealing it with any um, type of like the the um, sealant that we used uh, before so I'm just going to put this on here and just see how it does a little bit of a almost like a a um, just a clear coat to it and it kind of gives it you know it is wax so it gives it a little bit of a texture uh, when you touch it but and now this is ready to weather the storms of my farmhouse-ish dining room. So let me put this together. So it looks like, unfortunately, our, um, our watering can is way too wet to be able to do the second coat. So we're gonna use that in a different, um, or the next or a future project. But I just wanted to show you kind of how, um, this is going to start looking in my house. And if you have any questions regarding anything about what I did today, 
the um, process of either doing vinyl for your um, your wood or metal or anything like that, please let me know. I would love to be able to help you um, on your, your vinyl journey and to be able to um, kind of branch out into um, either wood or metal or things like that. And just to let you know, it is pretty easy. It is one of those where um, I thought, oh, I'm only sticking to paper and crafting, scrapbooking. And um, then I started going with a little bit of paint and some vinyl and um, I think it's a super fun way to be able to be creative. So um, just want to tell you, oh, thanks, Amy, for watching. Um, just thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know I took a little bit longer than I expected, um, but if you would like to um, help me out in my community to be able to reach more of you um, to share this crafting journey with me, could you share it? Could you like it? And um, that just helps my algorithms go up and be able to um, be able to bless more people with ideas and things like that. So I so appreciate you hanging out with me for the whole hour and 10 minutes. Um, but I will see you next week. Um, I'm always on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. That is my time that I have cut out to um, be able to feed my crafting and um, be able to hang out with you all. And um, I just pray you have a great afternoon and we will see you next Wednesday. You take care. Thank you so much.